Okay, I swear I may be an engineering professor, but sometimes machines are the bane of my life. Um, okay. Uh, hi, Tajay. Hi. Um, well, welcome uh, back to class. Uh, it's nice to see half of you. Um, it's a mask joke. My my life as a comedian is already over. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I should have said quarter. Ah, oh, dang. Man. You're right. That was just. There was nothing good about that. Let's restart class. Okay. <clears throat> Hi. Welcome to class. Uh, take two. All right, so, um, anyways, uh, we uh, have stuff to do um, that involves learning. Uh, last week, I gave you the definition for what a control system is. Does anybody remember what a control system is? Yeah. There, I think I fixed it. Does anybody remember what a control system is? Uh, any system that takes inputs and does some procedure and Okay, so takes inputs, modifies the inputs, creates regulated outputs. This is the uh, purpose of a control system. Uh, what is an input? It's data, it's raw physical values, it's anything measurable, it's any kind of information you can just throw at a system. Okay, yes is data. On is data. True is data. And all of those can be inputs. So when we're dealing with control systems, um, when it comes to an output, an output is again something measurable, something informative. Uh, everything that we're taking as far as inputs and outputs is treated as information, even if it's physical quantities, even if it is measurable, even if it's an analog value, it is treated as information. We are inputting information, we are outputting information. Okay? Uh, again, I, I use, I, I like using the example of leaning up against the wall. Also, I really like listening to the entire room <laughs> creak when I do that. <laughs> Forget about that every time. Um, but if I lean up against the wall, even though, yes, I'm just leaning up against the wall, I am inputting a force, and I am outputting a stress into the wall. Or I am outputting a force being carried by the wall panel, or I'm outputting a force that's being transmitted to the baseboard of this system. There's there is an innumerable, innumerable amount of information that is produced just by me leaning up against a wall. And the importance of a control system is understanding what is and isn't valuable information. 
Okay, we talked a little bit about you can take anything as an input. You can, you can go measure radioactivity. And that can be an input to what happens when I lean up against a wall. How does the wall behave? Well, let's take radioactivity into account. I don't know, maybe your radioactivity makes the board swell a little bit. Maybe that impacts behavior slightly. It, does, it, it won't do very much, I promise you that. Um, but that could be considered an input. Magnetic polarity of the room because of the magnetic poles of, of the Earth. That could be considered an input. We could be talking about the effect of gamma radiation that's coming from the sun. We can be talking about, you, you could measure just about anything. I could be measuring your natural frequency as you sit there and vibrate in your chairs. I could be measuring frequencies of you breathing. And now that's however many data points there are of you in the room. Everything can be measured and can be input into this, but not everything is useful. And what makes control systems so difficult is that there are a literal infinite number of inputs you can take. We can be measuring the behaviors, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure all of you have heard the butterfly effect. Uh, butterfly effect is some small thing somewhere has big impacts elsewhere, okay? What that means is you, you can't ignore the small things if the big things are gonna happen. <laughs> and also maybe we do need to be monitoring people outside of Crete. Right now, if we wanna know the behavior of how this wall acts when I lean up against it. Maybe we need to be studying seismology. Maybe we need to be measuring vibrations of the earth. We could measure a literal infinite number of things and they could be inputs into how this wall behaves when I lean up against it. Just informational inputs. And it's excessive, um, but this is one reason why a lot of scientists will simplify equations. They cut out variables. Some variables will just be listed as a constant because we don't understand the impacts of how everything else in the universe really caused that constant to be what it is. The gravitational constant, we don't understand what makes the gravitational constant be the number that it is. Uh, in fact, as of uh, 15 years ago when I was taking college physics, uh, I'm not sure if this is still true, but they did not know the value of uh, the gravitational constant to, I believe it was four digits. They did not have an accurate reading. Uh, some of that indicates that there are other factors that are influencing the gravity, meaning Newton's law of gravity it is only more of a generalization than an actual law. Uh, but still, we don't know how all those inputs affect it. We focus on the most important inputs, okay? Most important inputs to gravitational law, mass, mass, distance. That's it. You measure those three things, that is the three most important things to the gravitational law, okay? So when it comes to a control system, it's important to know what does matter and does not matter as far as inputs and outputs, okay? Um, I'm gonna draw a very simple diagram uh, of a control system. Okay, this, uh, oh, excuse me, this control system, it's gonna be a, uh, a regulator for um, when you have a, a solar panel uh, and your solar panel rotates. So here's your solar panel. It's on a, a hinge uh, and you have some motor control over it. Uh, what the solar panel does is as the sunlight hits it perpendicularly, uh, you get the maximum efficiency out of a solar panel. However, when the sun moves in the sky, you have different direction of radiation. Uh, the power production of a solar panel decreases. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to rotate this solar panel so that it is perpendicular to the sunlight. That's how you maximize the efficiency of your solar panel. Uh, it's really difficult to do if you just install it on the top of your garage, but um, it's, it's a lot easier to do when you have a ground-mounted display. And a lot of very large solar panel arrays 
this comes standard with them because they have to be able to point towards the sun. Okay, so with this type of control system, what you have is you'll have a sensor right here. You'll have some kind of a sensor array right here. And if we just look at it like this, uh, the sensor consists of a light detector that only collects light in this direction. You have one that only collects light in this direction, and you have one that only collects light in this direction. And those three sensors together, or maybe you have 10 sensors, or maybe you have 12 sensors aligned somehow to look, uh, so look like this. Uh, these three sensors together figure out, okay, where is the light most intense? If the light is the most intense in this direction, then the thing is facing maximum uh, efficiency. Okay, that means this is greater, th the light intensity measured here is greater than the light intensity measured here and is greater than the light intensity measured there. Okay, threefold. Okay, so if this is not the greatest, if one of these are bigger, then the solar panel has to rotate so that this is facing that direction. Just a little incremental degree. Okay, and this is, this is a control system that's used to dictate how a control panel actually rotates. So, the input to the system here is you have an array of light intensities. These three come in as an array. So I'm gonna go light intensity. I'm gonna give it a data value, it's an array. Uh, array of analog values. Um, it goes into a processor, uh, which figures out which one is the greatest. Okay, and then it turns around and it outputs a motor command, which is a single value uh, voltage. So this one comes in as three values, maybe 10, 12, 100 measurement values, just an array of in light intensities, and it gets output as a single voltage up and down on that motor, okay? This is a very simple feedback loop system, okay? What happens? Jackson, I'm picking on you right now. That was a really cool noise. <laughs> um, what happens if you being the mischievous person that you are, you're like, you know what? I wanna mess up this control system, but I don't wanna do any damage to anything. You get up there and what you do is you, you pull this off and, and you put some kind of a triangular shim on it like this. So it now no longer points perpendicular. Okay, it's actually pointing at an angle now and you're, you're so happy with yourself. You're pleased with your mischief because now this is going to operate less efficiently and apparently that makes your life better. Um, <laughs> um, but what, what happens if now this is on an incline, this is not facing the same direction. This is specifically designed so that if it's perpendicular to this surface, it rotates the solar panel so that this is receiving the maximum light input. If your light panel looks like this and your array is facing this direction, it's going to be trying to turn that solar panel so that this is facing directly upward. What happens when that happens? Does the solar panel know that it is operating at less than maximum efficiency? The solar panel has no idea, okay? This thing isn't gonna be able to say, oh, wow, that's wrong, okay? In a robotic system, a robot's not gonna know. A robot that comes through and inspects that is not gonna be looking for that sensor. The only way that anybody can find out this is wrong is if a human walks out there, maybe takes physical measurements, or looks at the sun, which you probably shouldn't do. Um, 
but you know knows the sun direction okay you know where the sun is pointing you're like wow it's directly overhead why is this pointed at an angle that's a problem you have to go in there and you have to manually fix this this does not have any way of knowing whether or not it's doing the right thing it is a very simple control system because it has one input one output in the presence of error we add error into the system which this slope right here is error if we add error into the system the error gets output into the output there is nothing to address error coming into the system okay is this the best control system for this unit is there a better one that we could design I'd hope so so what you can do instead is you can say all right what I want to do is uh, um, hold on this is called an open loop control system open loop okay so what we have now is we have this open loop control system I'm gonna move this a little bit there we go um, we're gonna have to come up with something that addresses this error that fixes this okay and what that involves is something called feedback okay feedback is a new concept to us for this class so far uh, what feedback is is it's an input that is also an output that's that's uh, one of my favorite ways of putting this it is both an input and an output <laughs> now I hope that that doesn't perfectly explain this um, I did have a uh, hunter Drake accidentally explain something better than I was going to uh, so <sighs> and now I can't ask the audience for questions anymore um, but what this is is you have an output that comes out of your system okay remember we we just discussed what is an output it's anything it's information it's physical quantities it's, it's something okay that is output from the system in some way or form but we take that modified output value and we use it as an input to our system okay that's what I mean by it's an input that's also an output it is input into the system to help control but it is output from the system because it is the system's behavior so what feedback does is it takes system behavior measures it or reads it if it's information sometimes you can't just you know you can't measure a true sometimes um, sometimes you just read that information and uses system behavior to inform whatever the controller is of the process's effectiveness okay um, by doing so what it does is that you're inputting it into the system and are you able to see around the camera Casey yeah all right I did pull it a little closer this time because I had a lot to write but it's kind of inconvenient for everybody in the middle um, if you need me to like point and read I can okay but what it does is it takes the system behavior it measures it and it reads it and it uses that system behavior to change how the system should be behaving
okay? When we introduce feedback, what we're introducing is we're introducing an it should be. Okay, uh, Hunter asked, when you first start the system, do you need to assume a value for feedback? Uh, like, is there a, a value for feedback in the solar panels? Um, sometimes the feedback happens within, yeah, usually you'll, you'll assume some value and then that feedback value will adjust with time. Uh, if it's a well-designed system, like, well, you're asking a question that's like four weeks in the future. Uh, but yeah, that's a good question, Hunter. Um, if you have a system and your nominal behavior is right here, uh, and you assume the feedback is coming out right here, but in reality, it's coming out down here. But you assume it's coming out up here. Uh, it'll cause the system to oscillate around that ideal value until it, until it finally reaches a nominal value. But that's a, that's a topic that I wasn't planning on covering today. Um, I was about to get to nominal values, but let's talk about that. Um, so what the idea of feedback is, now you know how the system is actually behaving. Um, you know, if you know, like, let's say you, you push down the, the gas pedal on your car. Uh, a lot of gas pedals are no longer mechanically linked directly to the air intake for your vehicle, uh, which regulates the, the power that's being output. Uh, what they're doing now is they're actually having electronic control systems. Uh, we're having electronic control systems that allow for feedback. In, in a gas pedal system, if you push down the pedal and your engine revs and your car doesn't move, your car does not know that. Because all it's doing is regulating the amount of fuel and air that's going into your engine. So if you push down on the gas pedal, your car doesn't move, your car doesn't know. In an electronic system, it allows for that feedback because the output of the system is how fast your car is moving. That's one of the information pieces coming out. Your engine revs up, goes, goes more powerful, but it also has the ability to measure the speed of your vehicle. If the speed doesn't change as you depress the pedal further, your car says, oh heck no, something's wrong and it allows for that feedback. But you have to specify what output should be happening, okay? For the solar panel, here we wanna specify what output should be happening, what we should be seeing out of this, okay? If we take all of our historical data for a solar panel and we say, based on what we know about the weather conditions, what we know about clouds, what we know about uh, what we've measured from the light intensity today, what we know about time of year, it should be outputting this information. Okay, and we add it to this, which is just a, a really simple uh, control mechanism. We put those two together, we should be able to identify, first of all, if there's a flaw in the system. But second of all, we should be able to have a secondary mechanism that tells us whether or not this is working. Okay, we have a way of gauging the performance. So what you do for this type of a system is you establish nominal behavior, okay? And that's uh, another key word for today, nominal behavior. Okay, nominal behavior to a designer is what you want the system to do. All right, you push on the gas pedal, you want the vehicle to go forward. You push on the gas pedal, you want the torque to increase for the vehicle. You push on the gas pedal, you want the engine speed to increase. If any of those three things happen or do not happen in a traditional system with no feedback and open loop control system, there's no way of knowing. It just happens. And if the system doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's broken. Bring it into the mechanic. Or, or uh, back in the 1930s, they would, they would just take apart vehicles and reuse the engines to, to make compressors and, and lots of things. Model Ts were, 
were very useful cars during the depression because they turned into a lot of uh, watering systems for crops. It's remarkable what, the, what they ended up doing with those. Uh, but it's broken. It does not work anymore. With the idea of feedback, we have the ability to, to establish nominal behavior. Now this doesn't tell us exactly what's wrong. Establishing a nominal behavior doesn't say, oh, this thing's on an incline. But it does say there is an adjustment in case this thing is not reading accurately. Maybe you have a little bit of light reflection that's going into this sensor from another solar panel or something. Maybe that, that's all it would take to throw off the entire sensor. And if that happens, that thing starts rotating to weird degrees. That's all it takes, just a little bit of reflection. Having a feedback system that says, okay, when we rotated, the voltage dropped, rotate back and see what happens. If we have that feedback, it then allows us to control this a little bit better, okay? And by being able to say, well, you're not gonna expect that the voltage is suddenly gonna drop at some point. Okay, by rotating it, by adjusting it to make it better, you should not see a voltage drop. If, when the adjustment happens, if, when this causes the motor to turn, if the voltage decreases, it has now left the nominal behavior. It's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so we can just go with something as simple as that. A nominal behavior is what the system should be doing. It can involve information. It can involve measurable physical properties. In any case, it is a statement of what you expect to see and what you are pushing the system to do. Okay? So, feedback with a set nominal behavior. In the processor, you add those all together, you get a closed loop control system. Okay? So, I'll leave this up for a second. At least the nominal behavior, I'm gonna erase the top part. I'm gonna take this now, and I'm going to add in a feedback system. So here, our input. What? You're still like in the view. Oh, okay. <laughs> I forget you can see the camera. Thank you. <laughs> is our light intensity. Again, this comes in as an array of analog values. Uh, we can even call it voltages because they're probably going to be measured as a voltage. Hey, we're gonna have this go into a box and this is gonna be, hey Tyler. Hi um, This is, this is going to be a, kind of our, our collection unit. This is going to be where, where all of our information is brought in and collected. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and call this the collector. Okay. What the collector does is it submits information to the processor, which outputs information to the motor which causes the thing to rotate. And this would be just like taking this, adding another box back here, and having this be a solar panel, and having the output be power in watts. Okay. Which you cannot see, but I, I, wrote, a, I wrote an arrow with a box that says solar panel. And it outputs power in watts. I put it over 
on this edge of this for everybody watching online. I could just move the camera, but what even is learning anymore? So at least you can see over here now. Um, but we have this now, it goes to the motor, the motor command, voltage out the solar panel, then causes rotation and outputs power in watts. Okay? Now, what we have is we're measuring power. Power is our output. Okay, we could also be measuring, we could consider the, you know, what I had over here, the motor command for the voltage. That could be considered the output of your control system. It is an output if you don't consider this to be part of your control system. Let me just cover that up. Okay, we, we could cover this part up and say that's an output to our control system. But here, we want to bring in the amount of power that's being produced by this system and we want to take that and spit it back into the system. We want to be able to measure that in a, some kind of a time reading. So I'm going to have a voltage sensor down here that's going to read in the amount of power that's being produced. It's going to read in the amount of volts that are being produced and it's going to output that information back into the collector. So this is a sensor, now that gets hooked up directly to the power, the sensor reads that value and it sends information back to the collector. Now the collector, this could even send, a, I don't know, you could have it so that this goes into some kind of a, a nominal value where this compares it to the nominal value and then sends the error value. In fact, let's, let's go ahead and do that. And now what we have for error is we have how far our nominal value is from what it should be. Well, sorry, we have what our actual value is from what it should be at the nominal value. Okay, so it rotated, the voltage dropped. Our, our voltage sensor detected that and said, oh, well, it should be higher than what it was before we adjusted the system. So since it's not higher, we now have a negative error. We need to go back. And it says, oh, too much of an adjustment. Rotates backward. So this right here is a closed loop control system. And I apologize for everybody watching at home who probably can't even see me. Going back over here. I should just move the camera back. <sighs> I really should. I'm trying to make it nicer because it's kind of hard to read from a distance. But... See, that would be smart. That would be. Oh, yeah? That's... That'd be amazing. Yeah. It's on Canvas. Under the assignments section, if you look under assignments, there's a link for the YouTube there. It does it not show up? Please, it's at the very bottom of the page. Uh, Hunter was able to find it. It's six other people were able to find it, so. Okay. Uh, it's in the syllabus. If you click. Let me put the link directly into Canvas then. Because I have been able to click that link and make it work, but I don't know if. Have you, not, have you been able to see the syllabus on Canvas at all? Yeah, like I saw it. Okay. If you 
so on. There's a lot more on the front. Oh, God. All right, chill. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and raise the board. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about what feedback ultimately is. You have any confirmation that you're able to do it, though? Let me know if you, you get there. No? Still no? No. I will put the link directly on Canvas then. Okay. And then I'm going to need you to, I'll, I'll email you and ask you if that works then. Okay. So that was a, it was a really simple example, just explaining what happens when you have a system that you have, where you have a control system and there's a little bit of error. Okay. Error is natural everywhere. Every control system that we have has